For the newly indoctrinated, Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files follows the story of a professional wizard in Chicago. We've started our podcast as a way to help break down the series' most important moments, characters, and lore. This is McAnally's Dresden Files Pubcast by Free Flow Rambling. Conjure by it at your own risk. Welcome to the McAnally's Pubcast brought to you by Free Flow Rambling. This is episode 5.7, Sex to Donuts. My name is Tanzan, and I'm joined by Jess. Hello. And we have a guest, Michael. Howdy. Maggie is still away. She is working remotely. She's gone forever and she's never coming back. I am your Maggie now. <laughs> Thank you so much to our Patreon subscribers for your generous support. It's people like you who help us keep doing what we're doing. If you're not yet a Patreon subscriber, sign up today and get a fuck ton of bonus content, kick-ass merch, behind-the-scenes outtakes, and more. Sign up today at patreon.com slash freeflowrambling. Chapter 14 Harry wakes up in a hotel, bandaged and bruised. He tries to get answers from Tara West, but is unable to get the answers he's looking for. The two leave the hotel to go find McFinn in the woods, but are both apprehended by an unknown assailant. Tell me I didn't get lucky last night. (laughs) (laughs) One more naked Harry. Yep. So far, that's one a book. (laughs) We're setting a precedence here, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So he wakes up in the hotel, bandaged and in the buff, and Tara has used the uh, SAS survival manual to figure out how to bandage him up and used a hacksaw to free him from the cuffs. Which Harry calls bracelets. He never refers to them as cuffs. He's like, one bracelet on my right arm, the other dangling from the left. I was just like, why are you calling it that? (laughs) It's interesting. I didn't notice that. I don't know if it's just like butcher looking for more descriptive words or Harry trying to separate himself from the fact that he was arrested like last night but it was just like it's just a weird weird thing to that just makes me think like he has his bracelet like does all the power stuff would he be able to use like handcuffs in the same role Mm, given enough time potentially but the the shield bracelet is something that is constantly being endued with magic all the time so uh, as later books come up once he uses the shield bracelet um once or two or three times in a night it's essentially devoid of any power so For now, the cuffs have not been imbued, and he doesn't have the time or energy to imbue them. Well, and I think there's a certain amount of symbolic And also symbolic meaning as well, yeah. Yeah. Which I don't think police cuffs would (laughs) help with. Yeah. I think they'd rather hinder him. Especially with the force that Murphy put them on. (laughs) Yeah, and especially when he's like, you know, we were just talking about it last episode when Harry's like, it was an uh, unsettling feeling like coming home about the cuffs. I, I feel like his feelings have changed now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> you thought. So Dresden does joke about getting lucky, and Tara really doesn't understand the humor at all, which no. I kind of love that she didn't. It's like, ha well, <laughs> And Harry also Shot asks down. how she paid for the hotel room, mm-hmm. and so she doesn't get his jokes. She needed a SAS survival guide and says that McFinn explained to her that the plastic can be tracked so it's very much like you don't know shit woman <laughs> yeah As he says dresden uh, sorry butcher writes that dresden squints at that but is it because that she calls credit cards plastic things yeah like it's just like all of these things though oh, are just yeah. like you know kids know these things you know mm-hmm. she's just got no awareness of totally social no. social conduct yep um so, quick recap now, uh, in the last uh, chapter and last episode we went over, that Harry has been devoid of all of his magical tools. He's totally 100% just a man now, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, as presumably the cops would be watching his house, so he can't <laughs> go and get more. So He'll have to find another place to get naked. He, well, hey, he's clearly fine with the middle of the street. So <laughs> <laughs> been there, done that. Yeah. So Tara urges him to get dressed, and then they so they can find the fiance. Yeah, and he puts up a bit of a fight. He's like, mm, "No, I've got some questions. Tell me what the fuck you know." And there's a little bit of a power dynamic going on between the two of them. And Harry fully expects to have this soul gaze with her during mm-hmm. it, and it doesn't happen. 
Yeah. Big shocker. Big shocker. Because a soul gaze happens with anyone with a mortal soul. If they have a soul that can be gazed on, Harry should be able to gaze it. So the fact that it didn't happen means that she's not human. We don't know what she is, but clearly there is no human part of her. Right. Which is very strange because if she's a werewolf, if she's a human turning into a wolf, that would still be a human. So it's very <laughs> strange to think about who are you? A world of possibilities, but right. at least he knows that she at least took care of him when he was wounded and didn't kill him. So True. potential friend. For now. Yeah, she doesn't fall into any of the categories that Harry is already that we've we've learned from Harry or from Bob of the categories of, of the different kinds of werewolf mm-hmm. because of her, her her how she she's described. Yeah. So yeah, again, Harry puts up a little bit of a fight, and he's like, "I'm not going anywhere till you tell me what you know." And she's like, "How does it feel, Harry?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, totally. And Tara West is like, "Well, we're wasting time, and I'm not talking, so let's go." And they have a, again a little bit of a standoff, and eventually Harry's like. Oh, no. And then Dara says, well, I've called the cops and told them you're here. <laughs> and Harry's like, okay, I guess we'll go. <laughs> like, okay. Oh, okay. That's a ballsy move on her part. Because, like, what if that backfired? Well, then she knows she's, she's going to get away. Yeah, yeah wow, right? That's true. That's true. I didn't tell him where I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Harry gets in the car. They drive off to a little lake near Lake Michigan called Wolf Lake Park. Mm-hmm. Just a little obvious. Just a little obvious. And that's one more thing. We've we've brought it up time and time again that despite the fact that uh, Butcher chose Chicago was basically just just completely randomly, just how lucky he gets <laughs> with just what happens to be in the area. And I'm just like, I because I Googled it too. I'm like, is there a wolf lake in Chicago? And sure enough, and I'm like, this motherfucker. Like, really? There yes, is? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, I'm totally just like, fucking Jim Butcher, like of all the places to just choose. And to be fair, I'm sure there's many wolf lakes scattered across America, but still. Right. So yeah, so bada bing, bada boom, here they are in Wolf Lake Park. And, you know, Harry still beat up is, you know, following Tara West into these woods, not bothering at all to be stumped. I mean, the man's given up. He's, fuck you. Mm-hmm. You want me to walk in the middle of the woods? I walk in the middle of the woods. I'm not crouching and ducking and creeping, like, <laughs> brambling his way through the middle of the forest, which probably isn't for the best, since uh, he's instantly seen and targeted then. Um, I think it's a quick, pretty quick beat down already. Like, yeah. the man went from beat down to dead asleep to beat down, like... <laughs> That was, is Tara intentionally making noise? No, she's trying not to make any noise. Oh, okay. It said like she's like pretty much doing her best to make be oh, silent. I she was. Yeah. Oh, maybe I misread it. T- I might have misread it. Because I thought she was trying to like make her presence known, so he but could. They didn't know. So so McFinn would hear them coming, purposefully. Because I know he made a comment that he's like, see, I can be cooperative. And I thought he was being sarcastic, but maybe he actually okay. was like. She was walking with exaggerated motions, planting her feet down solidly with each step, as though intentionally trying to make a noise. Once or twice, she stepped out of her way to tread on a branch, snapping it with a dry popping sound. I totally just was skimming over that. So ignore me on then. <laughs> They're both brambling through the forest, but only one is noticed. Either way. Uh, Tara accidentally walks into a trap and gets instantly caught up in this, you know, noose bear trap. For all that effort, she just gets snapped up. (laughs) I didn't Um, think those kind of traps would actually work. It's very Looney Tunes, right? (laughs) (laughs) The coyote and roadrunner and, yeah, (laughs) wrong person stepped into the center of the hex and, yeah. But uh, Harry gets tackled, taken down. Um... Slugged you know, into his already bruised l- jaw. Laments for a moment. Yeah, he's like, I've never been this beat up in my life. Like, oh, baby. It's going to get so much worse. Yeah. <laughs> well, he does manage to to grab his assailant's legs and knock him down. Yeah, he so. manages to roll out of the head-crushing kick. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a real quick. And you're awake, and you're done. <laughs> right. Yeah, so... But then he is quickly overpowered again. He totally, yeah. Yeah. What a shitty day for him, man. Like, and yet still comments, so I've had worse days. Like, pff, fuck. What a life. 
There's not much to chapter 14. It's just a... No. Real quick caveat. Wake yeah. up. We're in the woods. Ooh. Wake up, bitch. We're going to the woods. <laughs> Do you have an eye for the supernatural? A theory on Bigfoot? Earhart? Or Area 51? Have you witnessed events you cannot explain? The Midwestern Arcane is hiring. Super fast and quiet, starting at $13 an article. Chapter 15. Harry manages to stun his assailant to find out it's McFinn. The situation diffuses, and the three head to McFinn's camp. Dresden gets some answers from McFinn, but they are shortly disrupted by Murphy and Carmichael on a path to apprehend. So Harry grabs the wrist of his assailant and uses the raw spell and electrifies him. Boom! Tara, by this point, has gotten herself out of her trap and is instantly upset about this. (laughs) So Harry... You've killed him! Yeah, instantly. Like, also, like, you've just been going through this whole, like, wolves can hear and run and they know everything and they can get your heartbeat and they blah, blah, blah. And Tara's just like, you've killed him! Oh my god! And it's like, can you just listen to his heartbeat or his breath or something? Like, damn, woman, chill. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) So quick to judge. So Harry uses, like, pretty much what I would assume is, like, the last of his resources to create a quick windstorm. He's like, oh, whoops, that was more power than I meant to do. (laughs) (laughs) Flung. There she goes. Bye. But, you know, it slows her down for the moment it takes for McFinn to sit up and prove he's not dead. Yeah. That's funny. It's just a 50-foot circle of carnage results as right? the, from that wind spell. And it's funny because Harry quickly discredits like the Harry Potter universe where he's like, look, you don't need tools. You don't need words. You can just do magic inherently. The thing is, is that we like to use these tools and these words because it helps create a barrier between our mind and the magic, which is, you know, insulation to protect us, right? Mm-hmm. So using words that we're not familiar with helps create that insulation versus using words that we do use in our everyday world. So that totally fucks with the Harry Potter. Like, we all use the exact same spell for everything, you know? Because then you get too close to those words. And the insulation wouldn't be there. Mm-hmm. So that's, I was thinking, like, do wizards have to change up their own spells then? Mm, potentially, if they're operating for long enough, I would say yes. But I think it also depends on, you know, a, a lot of wizards are not going combat to combat like Harry is that's every true. day, you know? Like, most wizards go. Uh, other than the fact, as... You know, no spoilers, but we get into a reason for all the wizards to be throwing spells around quite often as we get into the higher climax of all the books. But up until this point, it's been a relative peaceful time for the magical world as far as the wizards are concerned. And yeah, most of them are going, you know, 10, 15, 20 years, 50 years in between really needing to go do, you know, they're just experimenting at home, you know, they're like, you know using spells to pour tea like for the most part you know they're not like harry is throwing around these spells every other weekend getting into these ridiculous yeah they're keeping trouble. to themselves you know so i think you know if a wizard is operating for three four hundred years he might have to change but the first hundred years most of them are probably fine because they're mostly not doing shit every day whereas someone like harry who probably probably will need to eventually you know get away from that yeah. And I like that it's a separation from Harry Potter, too, because it makes the magic less of a pull the trigger and it happens. It's much more on the us- user to make sure he gets the full effect, mm-hmm, which he mm-hmm. then goes into the next step about how it's all part of your own energy. True, I think that's fair as well. In Harry Potter, it's kind of like every spell is at 100% power. As long as you have a wand, you can do it. Totally, right? And you don't even need a wand. Um, um, for them, it's just literally like the spell, right? The wand helps in the same way, but if you, you there's a little bit of that, you know, same thing where it's like it helps but to control but you don't need it but yeah in the Dresden verse it's a little bit more D&D as we've spoken before is like you've got a reserve and you can determine if you cast it at first level or second level or you know sometimes you only have what you have and <laughs> that's that so we've got this really as far as I'm concerned it's quite funny description of McFinn yummy yummy <laughs> he's described as overwhelmingly masculine man (laughs) hairy chested and muscled like a professional wrestler there was gray in his hair and a beard and there were lines on his face putting his age well into maturity it was his eyes that showed me the most about him they burned green wild and haunted heavy with the weight of too much terrible knowledge (laughs) so it's not just women okay (laughs) but it's interesting it's like the women are normally clothed McFinn is like mostly exposed come on Harry 
Yeah. Mention his nipples. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Maybe just so. so hairy he can't tell. Well, so there's this uh, quick moment in here where, yeah, like both Tara and Harley McFenn are both fully described. And you've just listed off Harley's, right? And then Tara, we've gotten small little moments here and there. When he was first following the car, he said that she had like shaggy brown hair spotted with gray. And he's mentioned that he, she has amber eyes. Zero body fat. Zero body fat. Like, both of them are totally muscular. And, yeah, so it's just something to keep track of is that uh, Jim Butcher likes to m- label all of his characters with a few defining traits. He picks a word and he attaches it to a character and then he never uses that word again for that character. So sometimes when you see that word appear again... It's maybe a little hint that this is who we're talking about. This is who's working in the background. So I just want to bring up mm, the descriptions of, you know, a dark-skinned Harley, a deeply tanned Harley, and an amber-eyed Tara. And, you know, just keep those descriptions around for later. Yes, we will bookmark that, because it will return. It's coming back eventually. Mm Mm-hmm. So, eventually, things, tensions... calm down and they have a moment to actually talk and get some answers and Harley is instantly like well have you ever been so angry you just couldn't control yourself like do you understand what it's like to live with that puberty <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's like buddy come on yeah so Harry's like one time once I was that angry and that's I think pretty obvious a throwback to the whole Justin Dumorn fight for the life you know like yeah I have been so angry once mm-hmm mm-hmm <laughs> Uh, at, which happened during puberty. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they move on into a little bit like Wolf Woods. This is where you're going to hide out. And Harley's like, well, I've got places hidden around everywhere. Like, I'm constantly having to hide out. You know, I wake up mm-hmm. all over the place and need a place to stash away. This is one of them. And he's like, and whatever. Like, the FBI don't believe in werewolves. They'll never come here. And Harry's like, well, there's people who are smarter than the FBI working on this. <laughs> Damn. All right, bitch. Uh, going back a bit, there's yeah. one line I want to comment on when McFinn is talking about when he was in Vietnam and his platoon was wiped out and then he just went on a, like, a revenge spree. And I was so happy when I read this because there's actually a historical precedent for something like this happening. As so I love that it's a, like, it would be a great set for historical fiction because in the Vietnam War, there were so many reports of tigers just wiping out giant groups of men at a time. Oh, how interesting. And it was, it was tough for people, too, because, like, you're a soldier going off to war. You don't get tiger training, so you don't know how to deal with this. But also, it's a guerrilla warfare, so you don't want to just start setting an alarm every time the leaves rustle. And you don't want to just fire a gun unnecessarily. So there would be so many times where, like, platoons of Americans or Vietnamese would just not come back. Wow. And then also the Vietnamese, if they lost a platoon, and thought, okay, we don't want to give credit to the Americans. We'll give credit to the tigers. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, damn. So I would love to have like a Jim Butcher short story set in Vietnam going through all this. A tiger? A were tiger. A were tiger. Ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. So Dresden asks McFinn to answer his questions. And he d- does eventually get some, some answers going on. That, that, um, that somebody had broken into McFinn's place and had intentionally damaged the circle. And that they had asked Kim to fix it, but she unfortunately was unable, as we Mm -hmm. clearly found out by circumstances. And he he confirms that, yeah, the prison has only been broken for a month. Mm -hmm. And we said earlier in an episode that uh, this full moon problem has been happening. A while. For a while. It was a while before Murphy brought Dresden on. But, yeah, I think we were wrong. um, Because it says that it, it all only started a month ago. Oh. So I think that we all misinterpreted that for a moment because I think the IA thing is what's been happening since Stormfront ended. But the Lobo killings has only been a month because it says that, yeah, the first killing was right before the full moon one month ago, right? Hmm. So I don't know what kind of misread happened. But yeah, I've been going off the basis that this has been going on for f- several full moons. But in this chapter, it all seems that everything happened. The first nine murders, or sorry, the first... um. Yeah, first nine murders all happened just one month ago. Oh, I didn't take it that way. Yeah, I was definitely reading this with the same impression. I was like, oh, well, that explained the last month, but what about the months before that? He could still be responsible. But Yeah, it, oh. I guess, yeah this I guess now it's not. all seemed to yeah put it down into just 
one month. I totally missed that. Okay. Yeah. Everything's coming up McFinn. He's innocent. <laughs> Essentially speaking, like, because he said, like, the first few victims, you had the two gangbangers. Well, they said a couple, so I'm just assuming two. Uh, the little old lady, the three bums, the old man, um, and the businessman and the driver. That all started before the full moon and then went a few days after. So he could potentially be responsible for, like, one or two of them on the full moon. Mm -hmm. But the other ones don't fit the time frame. That's pretty impressive that that um, Murphy would make that sort of pattern recognition that it was on a, on a full moon. Then yeah, right. With it and only if it was only one one full moon. It, yeah, I'm not sure. It was. It's very backwards jumping for that. Because yeah, essentially this says like and that's a lot of killings for one for one full moon. Should we talk about Marcone while you look it up? You've had other murders happen in the same way, probably about four weeks ago when the moon was last full. Those were the other killings you were talking about. Four weeks ago, almost exactly, but no one else picked up on the full moon, so she only managed to pick up on the theory from two full moons, last month's and this month's. That's not enough data. Yeah. Not at all. But I guess if you're paranoid and you're like, everything is supernatural, then maybe you'd be like, hmm. Ooh, looks like because I mean to be fair. To be fair, every single time one of us vanilla humans look at the moon and we see a full moon, we're all like, "Ooh, werewolves!" Right? So I guess it could potentially be on someone's mind all the time. Right. But for Murphy, it's a little bit more like, "Oh, wait, this might actually be." Because I think it is fair to say that anytime any of us look at a full moon, we're all like, "Ooh, you right?" We're all like, "Oh my god, it's Friday the thirteenth, and it's Halloween, and it's a full moon, and there's werewolves!" Right? Like we all have that. Afraid of the Fun and instinct. Halloween. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Afraid of the things that go bump in the night. So McFinn denies killing Marcone's business partner as he was killed before the full moon. So Harry theorizes somebody is setting McFinn up. Mm -hmm. There's a few different things. Either McFinn is a really good liar and he has an accomplice, potentially Tara West, or someone is setting McFinn up, and in which case, who and why. Mm -hmm. And... There's there's a little bit of back and forth where Harry is explaining his theories to McFinn. He's going like, could be this, it could be that. Maybe I trust you, maybe I don't. Maybe there's a lot of people involved. Maybe you have no idea what's going on. And McFinn says, he's like, I only know Tara as far as the supernatural community goes. He's like, I have purposely not gotten involved. I keep my head down. I don't want to know about the supernatural. Tara's the first I've ever met. And Harry throws out that comment about the alphas. How's Billy? Mm -hmm. How's Georgia? And McFinn is confused. He has no idea who these people are. So I think it's a little bit more confirmation that, yeah, McFinn is being kept separate from the yeah. supernatural, you know? Mm -hmm. A little bit of suspicion on Tara. Mm -hmm. But she deflects right away. Well, it's kind of interesting why she chose to, like, to, I mean, why she chose to actually harbor these sort of teenage wolflings. <laughs> it's a little bit more. Why? Yeah. Yep. It's still no answers on that. But there, before there's any sort of resolution, Murphy and Carmichael end up making their way through the woods, which I thought was kind of just amazing that they managed to actually follow them there. What are the chances they're in Wolf Lake? Yeah, and even Murphy says, Carmichael, you don't even know they're here. And Murphy's like, I know they're here. And it's like, yeah. There was a bet for course. sex to donuts, so maybe they were like, <laughs> yes. These She's stakes are high. We gotta, we gotta sure. go. Yeah, so... And honestly, like, I can't blame her. I don't think that that's easy writing. Like, I, if I had nowhere to go to, and if I thought that, like, even if I don't believe in werewolves, but I think that somebody is, like, um, doing a very big process to make these look like fake wolf attacks, because it's already been determined that they think that, like, the werewolves, ki the Lobo Killer is using, like, tools designed to look like a wolf attack, but that they can tell that it's not done by a wolf. So if you're going off of that theory... Where would they have their hideout? Full Moon Garage, they checked that out, it didn't work out. What's next? Wolf Woods. The Wolf Lake Park. Like, yeah. Um, it's a very short list. If you have no leads, yeah. let's see. And especially because, like, there's no witnesses, so that narrows it down to, like, places where there wouldn't be a lot of people. Exactly, right? And clearly these guys do care about the theme. Yeah. So, yeah, so I would absolutely go They're check those out, kids. right? So, yeah, yeah. I took it as she, she was following the lead of, um... Of uh, Tara West renting the 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 beater, and that's how they figured it out. But 
How do they find that be- the old beater at Wolf Lake? Like, what are the chances? Like, I've had <laughs> zoom and enhance on that license plate. I've had yeah. my car stolen before, and the police have never found it. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe it was stolen by werewolves, and they just didn't want to deal with it. <laughs> Good point. The Good cops point. who did find it are dead now, and it's all yeah. your fault. Wait a minute! Uh, it was stolen on a full moon. You know what that means? <laughs> <laughs> All the women were on their period. (laughs) So, yeah, so, you know, before answers can be found, um, it's one more mad dash to the forest, and they decide that it's easiest to split up. And Tara, very valiantly, kind of goes and throws herself in the fray. She runs straight at the cops as bait, you know, and lets the two gentlemen run off. Well, first she asks Harry to create another fog out of his blood. He's <laughs> yeah. like, can't you just do that again? And Harry says, wonderfully, you can't solve all of your problems by magic. <laughs> it feels it's a very rich thing to say for him. <laughs> but <laughs> this very valiant for uh, Tara to run off. I think, you know, if, he, if he'd if he had more magic in him, he would have done it an instant. But in that case, he had to do a, a, a wise wizard saying because he couldn't yeah. do the magic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So he... So, yeah, so they make the quick... Panel and like, meet me at the gas station. And that's Peace. that. Bye. <laughs> yeah, they're forced to split up. Yeah. Chapter 16. Dresden escapes to the gas station and meets up with Tara West. He finds out that McFinn was apprehended and brought downtown to the police department. Harry contacts Susan, who comes to the rescue. They make their way down to Dresden's apartment to collect some items, then go to the police department to try to get McFinn before he makes his devastating change. So Harry gets to the gas station and waits an hour for McFinn to show up. If you've got the cops scouring this forest for three potential killers, don't you think someone would have gone past the gas station by now? Mm -hmm. Like, it's insane to me that he was able to just... Like, first of all, I, I work at a gas station. If anyone's in my store for more than 10 minutes, I assume they're a murderer and a killer. And, and I'm like, where the fuck are the cops? And if they're wearing handcuffs right? on them? Yeah, and if they yeah. <laughs> so even if he's crouched outside of the building, I'm still like, uh. what the hell is going on? And like, and we know that it's like nighttime now. Like, it's like, I think Tara said that we're like roughly an hour from the moonrise, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, we know that at any minute now, like this shit's about to get real. And you're wasting an hour outside the gas station? Right. Bitch, like, and Harry even said, he's like, I can make the circle out of sticks and stones. Like, just come find me and we'll figure this shit out. But an hour, like, bro, you got shit to do. Like, you couldn't have grabbed some hairs off McFinn and gone and found him yourself right before? Like, <laughs> fuck. Just like, run up to his hairy chest and pull some, legit, some chest like, hairs. You're come working on. with a good them. handful right there. Yeah, like, <laughs> just dumb. I was like, just sure, let's just sit around for an hour. And yeah. I get, like, he's probably woozy and injured and wants a break, but also, like, you just escaped police custody to save all these people, and now you're going to take a break? <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Yeah. And takes off his boots, no less, because they hurt from running. Like, he's not going to have to take off any minute again. He's like, I've got a time to rest my feet. Like, <laughs> bitch, I hate you. Oh, oh. <laughs> so Tara McFinn are no show. Mm-hmm. Dresden calls Susan and asks for help. So she agrees to come get him with a little bit of, you know, pokey pokey repartee. Oh, but man, Harry hates to phone Susan. It makes him feel cheap and weak. <laughs> it's like, oh. Like, Poor Harry. Yeah, it's stupid. Stupid. And, um. I didn't want a girl to be riding to my rescue yeah. protecting me. It just didn't seem right. And it, or earlier before, too, he was like, he, he just wants to reach out to Murph and just have a nice, comforting chat. And now with Susan. The person he's closest with, you'd think he could reach out and have a con- like, have a more heart to heart. But he's like, "How can I manipulate Susan into coming? I know how." Right, a story. Yeah, a story. Yeah, right. And I think like he could have gone in a totally different direction too. Like just been embarrassed by what he was wearing. Like he's in. Invested America by a congressman. Fantastic. And purple sweats, enormous purple sweats. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like, yeah, l- why not be embarrassed about her to see you like this? Like, why make it so, like, uh, a girl has to come and pick me up? Like, you're such a bitch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder if you just change, like, the pronouns on it, just how silly all of it would sound. Like, and again, like, again, like, <laughs> Susan is his kind of girlfriend. You want to seem maybe, like, strong and masculine and, like, I've got everything figured out. And Murphy's more, like, my equal and, like, we both have rough times. But even still, it's like, uh... uh. (laughs) 
So Dresden hears a scrabbling sound from around the corner of the gas station where he finds Tara West naked. And Tara asks him for his coat because he's too busy going. (laughs) Again with the Terminator motifs. (laughs) Jim really likes the movie. Okay. (laughs) I need your clothes. Motorcycle. (laughs) And now he's back to suspecting that Tara might be the killer. Yeah. He's very jumping back and forth. And like he says, he's like, well, like she's like, oh, I got captured. And he's like, well, then how are you free? And she's like, good question. <laughs> I made him uncapture me. I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Yeah, yeah she's pretty vague about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is continuing they the theme from how last to time. Follow prey. Yeah, it's like you want to believe in someone, you want to trust someone, but you're always being unsure and guarded. Well, and he's got good reason for it for for being mm-hmm. un- for not being able to trust. Yeah. I would have trust issues too if I, somebody tried to murder me. Yeah, and also like Tara West, as we said before, has a little bit of a lack of social. Um, yeah, she's just a walking so, red flag. Yeah, like she is just weird. She just gives off the vibe of just not. Uh, this is a bit you know? later, but she says like, "All right, do this in twenty long breaths." Like, who uses that as a form of measurement of yeah. time? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So anyway, she tells him she's like, "Yeah, they got McFinn," which I think is like Tara. I'd be pretty mad. Like, I just. Yeah. God damn, gave myself up to the cops for you. And you still got captured? How hard is it to run out of the woods? <laughs> After you caught me in your noose. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, if I was her, I'd be like, motherfucker. Yeah, there's other wolves. Yeah, so she he, McFinn is arrested and taken to the sh- police station, which is obviously very bad because any minute now. Mm-hmm. The bomb's full gonna moon is going to be high in the sky. And as we've already learned... Things are not, I mean, things are bad for McFinn on a full moon anyways. And when he's upset, things are a lot worse. And there's no way that McFinn just got arrested calmly and was like, okay, <laughs> sure. Yeah. You can't just arrest Hulk. Right. Yeah. No. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. No. <laughs> and so it is, um, yeah, Harry's like, no, sh- he'll be in a holding cell at special investigations, which is Murph's, lets her whole team, her whole world, like that's her world. Yeah, and as much as, as Harry is upset with her, he doesn't want to see her die either. Yeah, because, like, there's these, these... I mean, we just saw the destroyed prison in the basement of the house. Like, it's mm-hmm. clear that, like, if something wants to get through these, something's going to get through these. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so it's suddenly... Oh, fuck. Murph doesn't know what the shit she just did. And to a point, I'm kind of upset that Murphy doesn't know. Because if you're being this suspicious, you saw a full moon, you instantly said werewolves, you see all these killings. Murphy saw the basement. It's a little bit arrogant for her to be like, yeah, let's get into a car together, which is barely anything. And now let me put you into a prison, which I just saw didn't hold you. Right. And she also Was already the- says that she suspects that he's a loop guru. Yeah. So it's not like a big and surprise. She, she clearly knows the prison downstairs was meant to hold him. It didn't work. You think your cop prison is much better? Like this one was designed to hold him. And he was able to tear through it because of the uh, whatever messing up of that someone did. Oh, maybe Carmichael's just really good at talking McFinn down. He was, <laughs> he was a bro before, maybe he's just <laughs> High five it bug. out. Yeah. 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 So. They're just playing slug bug in the back. It's, it's all good. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Like this whole thing is just Murphy being a little bit like hot headed and just so quick to the punch that. Yeah. I mean, no, at this point, she no just wants resolution. Blaming, but yeah, like. Again, like, Murph, just calm down for a minute. Like, you are making massive mistakes right now because you're pissy. And again, like, at the end of the day... That's exactly it. Like, she's just on a tirade. totally. And, like, I get, like, you want to stop the murders and you, like, don't really have a choice. If you found the killer or who you believe to be the killer, you want to apprehend him. But at the same time, like, just fuck, like, fuck, lady. Was this (laughs) capture mission just S.I.? No, the FBI were involved. Oh, okay. Because I was thinking if the FBI weren't there, that she would want to bag it so they wouldn't interfere. But Yeah, no, the FBI are there. And she said, like, you... It, it didn't say exactly who she was talking to, but at the beginning of last chapter... Or, sorry, at the end of last chapter, she's like, you sweep out over there, you sweep out over there. So I'm assuming that either all of SI sort of or a couple team, of other yeah. beat cops or something, like, there's a team here to swoop through the forest. Right, and it, Tara explains that, that the FBI are the ones that actually had caught McFinn and brought him downtown oh, okay. mm-hmm. because they had argued about where to bring bring him, which I was surprised that the FBI were like, yeah, okay, fine, we'll bring him downtown. Because they're like, this is our case. Why would they? 
Well, if it Why gets, would they bring them to SI Holdings? Well, then? if it goes bad, that it's not on their turf. Of course, they also. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They also know what's going to yeah. actually happen with him. Yeah, Murphy's just got her head in the sand right Which now. Which is, you know, yeah. spoilers. Oh yeah, here you go. But, Have fun. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, for whatever reason, the FBI is totally fine with locking him up in SI. So that's where they go, mm. and you know, right around then, Susan pulls up in her Taurus. Yes. <laughs> Sexy mobile. Woo! Station wagon. That's our ride. <laughs> Tara instantly makes friends with her. Uh, <laughs> is this female always so stupid? <laughs> Ouch. Talk about no social skills whatsoever. <laughs> nice way to make friends. Right? Yeah. And when like she shows up completely naked wearing Harry's duster too. Yeah. It's like This is my girlfriend <laughs> and this girl thinks you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> now be friends. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little awkward that. Yeah. Yeah. So they ride back to Dresden's apartment and during the ride he uh Dresden tells Susan the whole story of what happens and editing out certain details to protect and any uh yeah. sensitive issues like white council stuff. <laughs> Again. If only they had the pubcast in that universe. They just put that on. Perfect recap. Right. Fully caught up. <laughs> yeah. So unfortunately, um, it's also confirmed that the full moon doesn't need to be visible to affect the werewolf. Just the fact that it exists, which is weird because the full moon is always a full moon. It's just whether or not we can actually well, view it's, it it's on a Earth. Cloudy day or not? Yeah. Right? right. So it is a little bit strange that the werewolf lore. This, this hemisphere or this yeah. hemisphere. It right? would be cool like, if it was like a Pirates of the Caribbean thing, whereas the clouds change, just suddenly change back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I that forgot would be about that. That'd be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> that would be really funny. So it is. Uh, yeah, it's not really explained how the magic works in this case because the moon is always existing. If yep. you're out in outer space, you just have a full-time wolf, or what? So it's interesting oh, yeah, that. that because the moonlight is just sunlight. Yeah. So what is it about the moon that's converting the sunlight? Right. And so if the moon isn't touching the ground, if there's obscured by clouds or rain or fog, but it doesn't affect McFin. I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he got cursed. It obviously doesn't have to care about physics. It only has right? to care about the curse. Maybe it's, it has to do with the like how lunar affects tides. We, we mentioned last episode our Cabal podcast, and there's a short story in there about how in order to summon the bone wind, all you have to do is say... You've been cursed by the bone wind. Bye. And that's the whole ritual. No. As long as you just tell someone that the bone wind is coming for them, that's all it takes. So I lost like, the game. Yeah, it's totally. What I said when that's we ate exactly our podcast. Yes. <laughs> totally. So it's one of those things where it's like, look, the, it doesn't have to make sense. You're cursed by the moon. You're cursed by the moon. Stop asking questions. No take backs. Yeah. Uh, so anyways. So they uh, arrive at Dresden's apartment to find an unmarked vehicle with police watching his home. Yeah, which I said, again, like, you assume his house is being watched, right? So he can't go back and get stuff. And Harry's like, let's go back and get stuff. Yeah. But they're watching it. I'm like, yeah, you're fucking on the run, on the lamb. Uh-huh. Criminal. Like. <laughs> <sighs> These boys. Yeah. Tara offers to distract the police. Of course, she uses her but how? full assets. <laughs> oh, her raw sexuality and feminine power coursing through her movements. So convenient that she's somehow naked. Despite the fact that earlier on it was said that she was able to shift, she got into the noose when she was hung in the tree, shifted into a werewolf to get, uh, shifted into a wolf to get out of it. When she dropped back down, she turned back into a human, was still fully clothed. Did she? She, she had her clothes. It said... And so now it's like, so oh, now what happened to your clothes? Uh, I was pretty sure. Maybe I just don't know how to read. <laughs> it's possible. I've been she doesn't having... know how credit cards work, but she knows how men work. <laughs> He's dancing in the rain to keep their attention. Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't there a Doing scene the from one of the, the, uh, the Star Trek movies where there's a little dance, distracting dance going on? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As someone who has definitely seen a Star Trek movie, <laughs> definitely that happened. Just agree. Smile and nod. Smile and wave, boys. Who knows? I never learned how to read. <laughs> I don't know why I'm here. Oh, it's time to get that blending potion. Uh, so Justin sneaks into the apartment, finds two potions, some coveralls, it's a plethora of other magical and medicinal items. Because, well, the... Boys in blue are too busy watching. (laughs) 
I mean, listen. Wouldn't they, like, at least try to apprehend her or just... Yeah, public nudity mm. is a crime. Yeah. <laughs> and Decent like, exposure. Yeah. Uh, like, maybe they're just like, don't blow our cover yet. It's supposed to be undercover. Just go with it. And maybe, like, two, like, plainclothes officers are supposed to be interested yeah. in, like, a naked woman walking down the street. I don't know what their deal was, but, like... Imagine Unprofessional. They, they, they just weren't even cops. They were just there on a break. <laughs> this is like lots of unprofessional yeah. law enforcement going on in this book. Like, just yeah, completely totally. awful. This is this. Uh, the U.S. military would not endorse. <laughs> no. <sighs> yeah. So Harry leaves the apartment, goes back to Susan's car. They pick up Tara, who conveniently <laughs> has done her job successfully yeah. done her job at infuriating Susan yeah. well he's 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 picked up some clothes for Tara so that helps smooth some oh, r- ruffled feathers you know maybe they're big sweats again too <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> turnabout's fair play <laughs> and then right at the end you know Tara's got that comment he's like oh it worked and she's like of course it worked men are foolish they will stare at, they will stare at anything naked and female Okay, lady. <laughs> oh, butcher. <laughs> oh, dear. So, yeah, next stop, special investigations. Uh, so, it's like Harry clearly has the stuff. He knows what he's going to try to do. But does he really have a plan? Because he just has an infiltration plan. Well, once, Harry once never he gets has inside. a plan, first of all. He just never does. <laughs> he's got step one, but never step two so or he'll, three. He'll mm-hmm. figure it out. He's super duper. Wing it. Finger, figure it out in the moment. Yeah. And... I mean, like, he, yeah, he brewed these potions earlier on with Bob, the two days before now, when he was getting that report for Murphy done. That's when he was brewing all these potions and getting ready for them. And he doesn't have a lot of extra equipment just laying around the house, so he pretty much can only turn to these bits and odds and ends and things. But at the same time, I'm just like, you've wasted so much time now. An yeah. hour at the gas station driving back to your apartment. Now you've got to drive to SI. Like, at this point, I'd be like, well, it's too late. Like, yeah. like at this point, I'd be like figuring like I should show up there with like bleach and a rag, like yeah. not like, oh maybe we'll do make it just in time for the final boss fight. Like, it's like you have two cops in front of your house, like knock them out, Trojan horse your way into the police station, like, go from there. Like, yeah, anything, right? Why not? I mean, you're already gonna be arrested and in trouble. Let's just go for like a full. <sighs> Yeah. He's just banking on a stealth solution to a very combat problem. <laughs> yeah, so he was able to grab some tools, at least. He did get his wizard staff, yep. his backup. Cleverly disguised as a mop. <laughs> <laughs> or not really disguised. He was like, man, that was one <laughs> really it, whittled This is mop. a stick in a bucket, people. Yeah. Stick yeah. in a bucket. <laughs> well, listen, most people, you know, you wouldn't be able to see the mop head. It would be in the bucket. I mean, you can look down at the bucket. Yeah, but who does? Who does? Who does? Doesn't he have runes on it or something? Yeah, I say like, uh, yeah. sir, that's a very bedazzled mob you have. <laughs> Artistic. Yeah. He's dressed as a janitor. No one ever looks at the janitor. <laughs> Point. <laughs> I will now be always looking at the janitor. Good. Hmm. They're always the killer. Yes. <laughs> Any janitors out there? I'm on to you. Yes, I'm on to you. So Dresden consumes the blending potion. Yeah, so it also helps for him to just fade into the background. Rune mop handle be damned. <laughs> so, he does he take it before he gets in the car or when he arrives at SI? Once he arrives. Okay. He gives it a couple moments to get started, but yeah, he takes I, it once he arrives. I was just arrives. wondering, if he did that in the car with Susan, what would Susan see? Because she would know that it's him. Yeah, it, she probably, probably not. Okay. I don't think so, because she'd know and be able to see through it. Magic, not a get out of jail free card. It's actually get it into jail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually... <laughs> Well, I thought that was a really interesting way that they that he that how Butcher describes how the potion worked, that that life is in grays, and the more that they pay attention to to Dresden, the more in color that they end yeah. up appearing. Mm-hmm. I really really appreciated that sort of the yeah. It's like a prism? periphery drug. It's, right. it's an interesting way of thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. It's like camouflage isn't meant to make something invisible. It's meant to disrupt the shape so you don't notice it as much. Mm-hmm. And that's exactly what he's doing. Totally. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, given enough focus, you can see him, but 
you know, again, who who yeah. pays attention to the janitor? You're still wearing the handcuffs, but <laughs> well, you know, right. they're they're concealed by a uh, too small janitor yeah. overalls. Yeah, those are definitely reaching down to his yeah, wrist, totally, and over wrist, the no, bracelets. these are my bracelets, dude. Yeah, they're all the rage these oh, days. Yeah. So he s- manages to sneak through the building. And I think, you know, he says for a moment, too, he mentions how in pain he is. And yeah, I think it's a good point now to say, yeah, he's got a bruised up bloody face. And he's been shot. He's fatigued. Like, I think given a little bit of notice, he probably would look like an escape yeah. convict. Like, like you see it all the time. Like, people have man- like a uh, white collar. You know, Neil Caffrey managed to escape by dressing up as a security guard. And it's just like, like there's a million movies where they dress up as a security guard or janitor or something and break their way out of jail, right? And obviously, mm-hmm. that's a little bit of just TV magic. Like, in real life, it's so much harder. You don't have the codes and the swipes and the blah, blah, blah. But, like, for events, if you just put on, like, a high-vis vest or, like, a caterer's uniform, you're good to go. Yeah, everyone is just, like, totally... breaking in, but... But, yeah, everyone cool. just nods their head. Sure, yeah, you're supposed yeah. to be here. No problem. Even for me, like, when people want to come into the back office at work... It's like got locks and doors and things, but people show up. They're like, "Yeah, I'm here for maintenance for your office." I'm like, "Yeah, cool, go here. You go. Let me open this lock right. door for you. Go back there." <laughs> Same with IT. Oh my gosh, the stuff that you, like, you can get away with just by being saying, "Oh, I'm I'm uh, for IT. I'm here to fix something." Cool. No cool. identification needed. Go. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had to show my cards and nothing. Nice. Yeah. Yep. See, people totally just suspension. just be confident dis- and you're good. There. Yep. So it'd be great if it was like. Like in Stormfront, he takes the wrong potion, just like Susan did. So he wasn't mm-hmm. blending in at all. It just no one cares. Total beacon, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> lighting up, and they're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, whatever. That'd be pretty funny. That's the janitor. <laughs> but I feel great. I feel great. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, spoiler: they have a guy playing poker in the basement. So this isn't the weirdest thing that goes on at the police station. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Don't don't bother the help, or you'll get roped into a conversation for <laughs> <Yeah>. six hours. <laughs> yeah, just to have social phobes working the front desk, and you're good to go. Totally. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so anyways, he makes his way into the building and waits for his blending potion to go on. And even himself says, he's like, I feel like an extra on the set of Casablanca. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's essentially what we've boiled down to. This concludes our episode 5.7, Sex to Donuts. Thank you for listening. You can find us online at freefallrambling.com and macanellis.ca. There we have links to other podcasts, social media, and other fun tidbits. Please subscribe if you like what you heard, and please consider supporting us through Patreon to keep the magic alive and see more content. We are Free Flow Rambling. Conjure at it by your own risk. <laughs>